844-500-4242. Joining us now on the line, as she does most Monday afternoons at this time, is Ann Coulter, author of many best-selling New York Times books, including her most recent one just out, it, Resistance is Futile. And resistance was futile on Saturday afternoon, wasn't it? It sure was. A microcosm of the whole book. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to, their protests, these lunatics, they're going to end up saving Trump from not building the wall. Um, our side is really, really demoralized. But, but watching these lunatics pounding on, I assume you've been running the, the videos, pounding on that, trying to break into the Supreme Court, um, the pr just nasty, ugly, m many mentally disturbed protesters. Um, that is that, that really shows the the underbelly of the pleasant-looking um, Democrats they present for our for our for our votes, like Beto O'Rourke. Oh no no no! Right behind the Democrats are these loons. Yeah, Beto O'Rourke, who says they need to import Mexicans because uh, to, into the into Texas because blacks won't pick cotton anymore. Who runs away from a uh, from a uh, a drunk driving accident that he caused and then and then denies it, even though there are police reports out there. Who commits a burglary of a college building and then says he did it was a college prank, even though he wasn't in college. Yeah, is is his name Beto O'Rourke or Beto Kennedy, Ann? <laughs> Well, he was never called Beto until he decided to run in Texas and wanted to give himself more of an Hispanic-sounding name. Um, I think the most egregious thing he's done is just recently when he was speaking at a college campus and citing that anti-cop book, The New Jim Crow, um, that, that cops are just racistly choosing black people and black people only to, to imprison. This is the new way. It used to be slavery, but now we pretend they've committed crimes. I mean, to be taking a broad brush and describing police officers, uh, particularly in Texas. That was where that Dallas shooting was, where five, wasn't it five cops yeah, five. executed? Yeah, right. This is, this is a Hillary Clinton-style style move. Um, remember, after that happened, Hillary Clinton went specifically asked to go on Wolf Blitzer so she could um, say, comment on how uh, the implicit racism in police forces across America and that she was going to do something about that. Five cops, but their, their corpses aren't even cold yet in the morgue, and she attacks them for their implicit racism. Yeah, El yeah Elizabeth sure Warren. the Russians that elected Trump. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren did the same thing. Two cops uh, brutally murdered in cold blood here in her home, her alleged home state of Massachusetts, and, uh, and she goes down to New Orleans to the net Nut Roots Conference, I call it, and talks about the, the American justice system is racist front to back. But, and let me ask you something. What is it with these Democrats changing their names? I, I you know, I thought I mentioned it briefly last week, and then I thought of more. There's Beto O'Rourke. There's Gary Hartpence. There's Anthony Villa, Villa who became Anthony Villa Ragosa. There's Kevin Leone becomes Kevin DeLeon. And then there was the congressman in, in uh, Philadelphia who's now in prison. I guess the name was Frizzell. I don't know if it was Lefty Frizzell, but he changed it to Chaka Fata. I mean, all, <laughs> all these. <laughs> That's a pretty good list, I, Howie. I just did it off they're the top like of my head. You know, I like political racial dolazars. <laughs> no, don't confuse us with white men. <laughs> We've just changed our names to sound more ethnic. <laughs> How about if I moved to Texas, Ann, and I could become Howie Carrara? You know. <laughs> Well, if you want to run as a Democrat, uh, yeah. um, if, it, if it isn't already clear, uh, if the Democrats take control of the House this fall, um, I need to put a list together, uh, because based on seniority, all of the important committees, and, and probably by rights, the, the new speaker, um, it's pretty much going to be across the board, um, not only members of the Congressional Black Caucus, but some of the <laughs> especially ripe ones, like like Sheila Jackson Lee and Maxine Waters. Um, I mean, if, if uh, what's, whatever her name is, Alexa Ocasio-Cortez and that one up near you, I forget yeah, her name. Uh, if Ayanna is, Presley. Name? Ayanna Presley. Right. Yes. If this isn't enough to show Democrat white men that there is no place for you in the modern Democratic Party, um, I think it will become very clear if Democrats take the House. Yeah. I, I, by the way, Ann, I missed one. Uh, Linda Ch Sanchez, formerly known as Linda Jones. 
out in California. Wow. Remember her? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, she. I think she married. I think her name was Jones. I think she married a Jones. But as soon as she was running in that district against B one Bob Dornan and so, said, "This is fifty percent Hispanic now," she went back to. Right. She dumped that. Uh, she dumped that uh, married name faster than uh, you could shake a stick at it. Yeah. I have been thinking that if. Um you're, I should start advising young Republican girls I meet. Um, I mean, I guess you don't have to be a Republican. Marry an Hispanic so you can take the last name right away. You will be guaranteed a spot, a spot on TV. Yeah, that, that's that's a good point. I mean, you know, there, there used to be a guy that worked for Mike Dukakis, and his name was uh, Manuel Carballo. And, uh, you know, I always just say, man, you got it made. You know, you're, you're Spanish, but you can claim to be Hispanic. And he goes, I would never do something like that. That would be despicable because he was Castilian or something, you know. Right. But I thought to myself, yeah, he's the one. He's the one in a million who was not going to try right. to take it. And he died shortly thereafter. So I, I wonder what he would think now if he could see the, the way these, these uh, you know, people are taking these names or changing the names. Kevin Leone, he didn't think Le- – He thought, I guess he was afraid he was going to be confused as an Italian, right? So he decides, right. to, become, he decides to become Kevin DeLeone. Like, it's as in so Ponce de Leon. You right. Know? It, it's just, it's so despicable how, how, I mean, and the Democrats have the audacity to talk about Republicans pushing identity politics. No, this is coming 100% from the left. Um, as I've said many times, it is, it is one thing to have set asides, racial set asides, and affirmative action for African Americans, the descendants of American slaves. But, but this idea that, you know, you arrive on Friday, and by Monday, you're looking at the newscast and saying, I noticed there are no ties on the evening newscast. No, you, you just got here. <laughs> right. And, and someone just points out, we forgot the biggest fraud of all. Mayor Warner Wilhelm or Warren Wilhelm. Oh, that's right. Of New York City. The one who told the homeless woman to get lost the other day because he was in his, doing his workout. Is that right? Oh, I missed that. Yeah, that was on the front page of the New York Post. That's oh, well, we've actually got some, we've actually got a tape of that, Steve. Right? You got the. Let's listen to this. Why won't you commit more housing for homeless New Yorkers, Mayor de Blasio? <laughs> He's doing his workout, I Anne. <laughs> I love when the left turns on their own. It's so much fun. Did you see, um, what's his name? Scott, the one married to Gabby Giffords. What's his name? I, I don't know. You know, He's the one Mark who shot Scott? the astronaut. Oh, it's Kelly. Scott Kelly. Yeah, oh, did yeah. You see, he sent out some quote, <laughs> some some statement. I, bl- I believe it was attacking Kavanaugh. Don't worry. The point of it was totally, you know, down with the social justice warriors. But he quoted Winston Churchill, and the SJWs ganged up on him because apparently <laughs> Churchill is now is now a white supremacist too. Um, so so the big, you know, tough man astronaut sends out a tweet apologizing for quoting Winston Churchill. Yeah, I, I know. I, I know. Yeah, that was pathetic. Hey, how about this latest thing? Did you see? You remember this woman that works at CNN? You probably don't know her because I doubt you watch CNN any more than I do. Caitlin Collins. Remember her? Yeah, no, I'm trying to get to know her now because I know the story you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, she was. Uh, she was, They brought her in. She was uh, as part of a pool uh, uh reporting and camera crew just to get a spray you know that you, you they have they bring in one reporter in case something happens so she she decides she violates all the usual rules of protocol for the white house press corps and starts screaming at trump about the michael cohen tapes uh, that he would that he had supposedly given up and uh, you know michael cohen had him had these tapes which of course he didn't have as we later right. as we found Much out like uh, um What's her name? The Apprentice Gal, Amorosa. Whatever happened right. to that tape of Trump using the N-word? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> but anyway, so she was a hero. So she, so, so they said, you, you know, you're out of here. You, you know, you're out of here for a couple of days. You're, you know, you, you can't come in. Uh, you can't come to the press conferences because you violated the rules. I mean, it wasn't like permanent banning or anything. They just, you know, giving her a slap on the wrist. 
So, you know, so she's a big hero, and even Fox News has to chime in and say, oh, Caitlin Collins deserves the Profiles and Courage Award, et cetera, et cetera. Well, guess what happened, Ann? A tweet. Someone looked back at her high school years. <laughs> so that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I love them all leaping to her defense and saying, oh, you can't be held accountable for something you do in high school. They will take right. the double standards, make <laughs> your head spin. They were just calling Judge Kavanaugh a rapist for something that allegedly, clearly did not, uh, right. happen in high school. And I have I have it right in front of me here. What I have, I'm holding it up for the camera here. Here are her tweets. This is not, this is not an unproven allegation. These are the tweets that she was sending out and every and not a problem because you know what she works for cnn and even if she got fired from cnn and she could go to work for msnbc she could be a co-anchor with joy ann reed and they could all talk about how much they uh <laughs> they don't like uh members of sexual Blacks minorities right yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no they'd have i i mean i guess if you have 100 percent control of the media this is the sort of thing you can get away with but it's still this one, this one's a little stunning. You have to go back, um, what is it now, 18 years to get to Gloria Steinem writing in the New York Times that a governor dropping his pants and saying kiss it to someone who works for him. Um, no, that's one free grope rule. That's, he took no for an answer. But, um, but Kavanaugh allegedly, again, BS story, no corroboration, um, recovered memory, and so on and so forth, allegedly did the same thing as a drunk college student, and we're going to burn down the Supreme Court if he gets on because of that. Um, that's 18 years. Here, it's a week later. <laughs> how, how, and how about the fact that they, they, uh, they all, two years ago, they were writing about how the Democrats had a lock on the Electoral College. They were going to control American politics yeah. for a generation, if not forever. Then they lose the election, and they want to abolish the Electoral College. Then they talk about the Supreme Court is sacrosanct. Any time they rule in favor of uh, abortion or gay marriage, it's settled law. The Supreme Court decided it. It's the ultimate thing. Now there's a conservative majority on the Supreme Court, so we're going to have to pack the Supreme Court, right? Yeah, I, that's, I mean, they, that's they, well thought out. <laughs> but, they, but it's true. That's what they're saying, Ann. You know, they're talking. No, about, I know, well, they they do not accept democracy or losing in a democracy. Thus, immigration, of course, the biggest issue. That's how they win finally, permanently, and beyond repair. Um, we're 50 years into the social experiment of bringing in um, a million third worlders or more every year. Eight out of two vote for the Democrats. The Supreme Court, they figured out. Out about 30, 40 years ago, it's not that the Supreme Court is was designed to be a super legislature of these philosopher kings, but the left figured out, oh, they go last. So simply as a logistical matter, if we can pilot these cases and get five justices to rule for us, so it's either, you know, 60 million foreigners voting for us in elections. If that's not even enough, then we'll get five justices. Um, now these are being, these, these paths of cheating are being cut off. So they want to back the court. Well, right. okay, then a Republican gets in, and he packs the court. And then a Democrat gets in, and he packs the court. I mean, pretty soon just, we have more, we have more people on the Supreme Court than in the, um, than in the New Hampshire House of Representatives. Right. right. All right. right. All right. They will it, not accept losing. Ann Coulter, thanks for being with us. The title of your new book is? Resistance is futile. How the Trump-hating left lost its collective mind. And it certainly did over the weekend. Thank you, Ann <laughs> yes, Coulter. Goodbye. Bye. I'm Howie Carr. If you change.